A happy Friday morning to you all. I come to you again from the Drennan Springs Chapel two days before worship, and I hope a lot of you are planning to be with us at the chapel 11 o'clock for worship. We have a music special. One of our newest members, Amanda Workman, is going to bring us a song. And at 10 o'clock, we're going to have our first choir practice of the fall year. So get to the chapel. But right now, I want to share with you two scriptures, one from the New Testament and one from the Old, and they are about you serving as part of the body of Christ. Now, I know a lot of you, like myself at times, have thought, you know, what What can I offer the church? How can God use me? And some of you might come to be hesitant to even come to church and be part of a local church because you think, man, I, do you know what I've done? I mean, uh, you know, I've done a lot of things. I've lived a life, and maybe I'm not proud of it. Maybe I had a good time. But anyway, you know, how's God going to use me? Because he wants the saints, not the sinners. And that is such a misconception. The place I'm at right now, and I'm looking out where I can see into the chapel, that is a hospital for the sinner, for the sick, for the hurt, for those who need healing, myself included. And I know that I lived a lot of my life uh, growing up and especially a uh, young adult thinking, man, I, I don't know. There's, there's no way he could use somebody like me because do you know what I've done? Well, there's a scripture in Romans chapter 12 that talks a whole bunch about serving God as part of the body of Christ. Now, it starts really uh, chapter 12 in Romans verses 3 through 8, but I'm going to read 1 and 2 because they are such pivotal scriptures. I've heard these so many times. Uh, over the years, listening to one of Harriet and mine's favorite uh, ministers that you can hear online on the radio, on an app, and we've read his books, Chip Ingram, and he always talks about Romans 12, 1 through 2 being a living sacrifice. And here we go. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And just as a note before I go on into verses 3 through 8, I've been sitting here for the last couple hours uh, printing out and copying and stapling and folding our church bulletins for Sunday. And while doing so, after listening to a uh, a good portion of the Bible being read aloud, I listened to some music, and the music I listened to was some 80s hair band Christian rock by a band called Striper, and it blew my mind. And it was great to hear somebody who was so defiant against culture and norms. This is 35 to 40 years ago, and they loved metal music, but they wanted to sing it for the Lord, and a lot of their lyrics that I heard today were scripturally based and Christian concepts, and that's really cool that whoever you are, whatever you love as far as just your life and uh, your persona, your hobbies, if you want to follow God, he's got a place for you. And that's where I take you to Romans 12 through through 8. It says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, I stop there for a moment before I go into the Old Testament because that's a list that, that shares a lot of things. It's not just about preaching, teaching Sunday school, being an elder, things like that. It's, it's about you and who you are and what you have to offer for him. Now, me listening to a Christian metal band for the last 45 minutes 
I think, you know, what do these guys have to offer? Well, they have slaying guitar licks to offer with scripture. And on their shirts, I saw it said Striper, and it said Isaiah 53, 5, which is the, the scripture about by his stripes we are healed. And I know you know that because uh, there have been a lot of songs written about that, and it's a very pivotal scripture. You know, Isaiah is such a precursor to what happens in the gospel. So much prophecy, very specifically about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So by his stripes, we are healed. Now, if you think, well, a lot of the things I heard in that list in Romans sounded like church-type stuff. Okay, there's other gifts too. And this is where I want to take you into the Old Testament. Back in Exodus, God is instructing his people to build a tabernacle. They are a traveling nomadic bunch going through the desert towards the Holy Land. It takes years and years, decades and decades to get there. And he wanted this tabernacle to be this holy place that would move as they moved for worship. And it's a precursor, of course, to the temple. And in uh, chapter 35, starting at verse 30, it talks about two guys, Bezalel and Oh Aholiab and their gifts. Now listen to what kind of gifts they had. It didn't say they were, well, just listen. It says, Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, and with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. And here's the skills. To make artistic designs. For work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he has given both him and Aholiab, son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So Bezalel, Aholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. And that reaches into chapter 36, just one verse. But isn't it something that there in the Bible, way back in the beginning, you hear words about God using someone who was able just to use their hands to craft something, to build something, to work with stone, to work with wood, to work with metal. You don't have to be someone that is teaching a class. You don't have to be someone that's preaching. You don't have to be someone that has all the answers when you talk with someone. God will put you to use. And we want that here. I have uh, really thought and prayed these past several days about just a vision for our growth. And I want to talk with our elders about that and some of our leaders about that very, very soon. But I feel like that our church and hopefully a lot of Bible believing churches are right on the cusp of a big wave of movement and growth. And we've experienced growth here lately. We're still a micro church. We're small, but the spirits are moving. And if you're not in a church body, we want you to give it a shot. Now, it might be that Drennan's the place you land if you live in this area or if you know people here or if you uh, have tuned in, you like what we're doing on Sunday mornings. But if you live close by to a church that you know is teaching the Bible and you have folks there, family, friends, neighbors there, try that one out. We want every single church in this county that is teaching the Bible to grow and to thrive and to prosper. Now, if they leave this one behind, if they're not teaching from this, it's time to go to one that's using it. And I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Get yourself in a Bible-believing church. If it's this one, we'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.